water, earth, fire, air. Only the avatar, master of all four elements. Damn. Ah. Ah. So this is Spado of the Water Tribe. We haven't gotten a lot of exposure to the Water Tribe or history of them. We just know that Katara is the only waterbender. Ah, this is good. A water tribe weapon. Cool, so we're gonna get some backstory on Katara and Sokka. There was a battle. The firebenders fought back, but the warriors drove them down this hill. So we're adding Tracker to Sokka's abilities. Dad was here. Get back! We're after a stowaway! But how did you find him on my ship? My sheer shoe can smell a rat a continent away. The show does a great job bringing a lot of different conflicting interests together and having their narratives run kind of parallel to each other. So now we're adding another one, this woman. Being a man is knowing where you're needed the most. That's here protecting your sister. Sokka? Bato? Where's that? He and the other warriors should be in the Eastern Earth Kingdom by now. Oh, they're alive. That's good. Perfume? Maybe we could dump some on Appa. Because he stinks so much. Am I right? Yeah, <laughs> that was a poignant cough. One time there was this giant eel. And so I... who was it that came up with the great blubber fiasco? What's that story? It's a long one, eh? Some other time. And he's left out. It's tough to enter someone's world at first when they're super tight knit. I'm expecting a message from your father. You can come with me and see your father again. I mean, to his credit, he he did like lose everything too. Like his whole family, his whole tribe is gone. I guess the Katara and Sokka are the only people he has in his life. I'm looking for Bato of the Water Tribe. Make sure he gets this. Uh-oh. It's a critical moment for Aang. He's gonna decide. No, Aang, don't do it. No. Oh. You must have some good stories from your first time ice dodging. He never got to go. What's ice dodging? You're about to find out. Good man. The girl must have spent a lot of time here. We have no time for this. <laughs> I like that callback to the fortune telling episode. That's good. Oops. Saka, you've already proven yourself. Maybe we should end. <laughs> oh, and even the teacher gets worried. I want you to spend as much water as you can between us and those rocks. Now! Hey, that's about, speaking of leadership. Yeah, there you go. I guess leadership is a big part of Saka's journey, because they keep doing little things about that in episodes with him. For Saka, the mark of the wise. For Katara, the mark of the brave. And for Aang, the mark of the trusted. You are now an honorary member of the Water Tribe. That hurts. I can't. Come clean. A messenger gave this to me for Bato. How could you? Well, you can go to the North Pole on your own. That's devastating. Yep, I mean, Aang messed up. Sokka and Katara are basically all that Aang has. And that's really critical for Aang, I think, because he's been portrayed as being really social and really kind and, and loving. It looks like he was well liked at the Wind Temple when we saw the flashback, and he basically has lost everyone that was important to him. And so it's naturally he's gonna cling extra hard to Sokka and Katara and be afraid of losing them. So they're exploring that theme of, of loss, fear of loss of people who are important to you. Again, talking about the burden and his burden as a hero, his actions will determine their fate. And that can be something that creates fear. It almost is like a hindrance in a way, but oddly, it's also the thing that gives him the most strength because I'm guessing it's it's his friends that are going to give him the purpose to really like buckle down and accept it and become the Avatar. That wolf sounds so sad. It's been separated from the pack. It's how I felt when the Water Tribe warriors had to leave me behind. And it's what they just happened to Aang. Sokka? Something they all understand, obviously. We need to go back. Your father will understand, and I know he's proud of you. Bato seems like a pretty, pretty decent guy. Avatar, you must leave. Okay, I get it. Everybody <laughs> wants to be gone. The beast was using the scent of a necklace to follow you. <gasps> Katara! Nice. Beast Wars. <laughs> They're just meant to be two halves of a whole. He just did some magic to wake her up? Why do I feel like Uncle Iroh just has powers that are just way beyond bending? He just has like magic. <laughs> That's cool, we got a nice Abba fight scene. Cool. Nice.
Damn. Who knew that Abba would be such a beast? That thing sees with its nose. Let's give him something to look at. Oh no. Uncle, I didn't see you get hit with the tongue. Yeah, alright. Don't you want to see your father? Of course we do, Annie. But you're our family too. Mm. The Fire Days Festival. This would be a great place for me to study some real firebenders. Hey, a poster of me. A wanted poster. This is bad. I would totally take a wanted poster of myself and I would keep it forever. <laughs> Nice touch. No one can surprise the Fire Lord. Because this is a show that's proven itself to be fairly nuanced in its approach to, to characterization and people, I'm fairly certain that the Fire Nation citizens are gonna just be like normal everyday people. I need a volunteer from the audience. How about you, little lady? I can't hold it. We gotta help her. No, we don't want to make a scene. Oh no. Oh no. Get you out of here. Least conspicuous group of all time. Abba, down here! With every passing episode, I like Appa more. You're a Fire Nation soldier. Was. My name's Che. Nice. So we have a good guy Fire Nation dude, which is cool. Jong Jong the deserter. You mean there's a firebender out here who's not with the Fire Lord? He's not crazy. He's a genius. There's a thin line. This could be my only chance to meet a firebending master. Why won't he see me? He says you're not ready. Not ready, is he? I'm going in anyway. Master, I need to learn firebending. I'm the Avatar. It's my destiny to- Destiny? What would a boy know of destiny? If a fish lives its whole life in this river, does he know the river's destiny? No, he cannot imagine the ocean. Okay. I like this guy already. This is something I'm glad I get to talk about because I feel like I started talking about an issue in episode 12. If you're a hero starting your journey, you can see this impossible task in front of you. And you know that if you pick up this task and fail, it makes things worse than if you had never tried it at all, potentially. And so what I said at that time was, how do you start a journey knowing that there's a high chance you'll fail? How do you have the confidence to do something before you even know you can do it, before you've done it once? What I failed to add to that, which I think is important and is kind of the conclusion to that, is that you just can't, but you have to do it anyway. The act of walking down the path will reveal the path. That's in my experience. Not all the time. I mean, sometimes you just fall flat on your face. What he says about the stream is true, but if you don't get in the stream, if you're not swimming, you're never going to get there anyway. And that's basically what Aang's doing. He's hopelessly outmatched here, outskilled. He doesn't have what it takes right now, but he does have something that's very important, which is he has the will, he has the interest, and he's approaching it openly, and he's being vulnerable. And so I kind of suspect that the master here is testing him and wants to see Aang's fire, so to speak, that he's passionate enough to go through with this. This reminds me of Star Wars. I made that, that stupid Yoda joke a couple minutes ago, but that's basically what it is here. Yoda pushes Luke through the same thing where he's like, you're just not ready. Can't even lift this X-Wing. But it's Luke's passion for learning kind of wins Yoda over and Yoda's like, okay, well then I guess we're gonna do this thing. I think that's where this is probably going with Aang and this guy, who's super cool. I can listen to this guy talk all day. Please, I have to learn. Are you deaf? How can I teach you if you refuse to listen? Mm. Fire will spread and destroy everything in its path. You are too weak. You think I am weak, Avatar Roku? You will teach the mm. Avatar firebending. This is interesting because <laughs> Aang kind of has like a spokesman. And in a weird way, it's Obi-Wan. Was I any different when you taught me? I guess it's just something about the archetypal master pupil story that repeats, but it's interesting that there are so many parallels between Aang and Luke. Why not? Bend your knees. What do I do now? Silence! Talking is not concentrating. Yes, this is one of my favorite things. I could watch this forever. I love these old kung fu movies and martial arts movies where it's like harsh master and naive but capable pupil. It's so good. One of my favorite segments from any movie ever is the uh, in Kill Bill with the bride and Pai Mei, the Chinese master. Something about it, it's so beautiful. Maybe it's a deeply personal thing where I feel like I haven't had enough mentors. It's not so readily available. Like there's no fire master I can seek out. Or maybe the problem's in me that I actually don't even know what element I'm trying to master. How can I seek out someone who can teach it to me? It's so funny, I was talking about this today with a good friend of mine, you know, being stuck in certain ways and 
that person recommended that I find a mentor. And I'm like, man, finding a mentor is like harder than just solving the challenges in front of me by myself. <laughs> yeah, I, this is like a weird recurring theme for me in this show. It's like making your own path, being your own teacher, finding your own way. And I definitely have people I learn from, but it's not so specific. Little bits of things from everyone and like kind of combining them. One of my biggest teachers has been media, which is why I'm so into this kind of thing, why I like movies and TV and stuff. And like experience. Experience has been a really good mentor. I feel like it's a societal thing where it's lacking, but I can't say that for sure. I can say with certainty that for me it's lacking. I was talking to a friend of mine about this today, where when I first went to Korea, my first boss there was like a real estate mogul, and he was kind of grooming me, I think. It was super interesting, but I was too young and naive and headstrong. I didn't see it for the opportunity it was. I kind of ended that relationship prematurely because I was having too much fun. I've been too headstrong, I've been too stubborn to really appreciate these kinds of people when they appear in my life. You brought me up here to breathe? Assume your stance. Wider. You're not even looking! Wider! <laughs> no. <laughs> and I feel like this kind of relationship somehow ends up being the deepest. Like this harsh master and like headstrong cheeky pupil, they end up respecting each other because they have something that the other needs. Or they have something in common, love of the craft. So this guy is going to be one of Aang's biggest supporters going forward. That's my prediction. I've been breathing for hours. You want to stop breathing? <laughs> I want you to stop wasting my time. I want to know how to shoot fire out of my fingertips. That's me. Not necessarily with masters, but with learning things. I'm like, give me all the knowledge now. That's been my problem with studying language for so long. I'm going to speak fluently tomorrow. And that's just not how they, how things work, unfortunately. I had a pupil once. He was only concerned with the power of fire. I know who it is. It's the uh, it's the Lord Fire Lord Oz Ozai. Its nature is to consume, and without control, it destroys. Or maybe Admiral Zhao. We'll see. Master, there is trouble. Concentrate on your leaf. But I'm ready to do so much more. Uh oh, it's gonna go wrong. Ugh, careful! Ugh! Now that's fire bending. <laughs> Hubris. Oh, you'll hurt yourself. Ah! It was an accident. I was a guitar. I'm so. Ugh. I told you we shouldn't mess around with this. Wow. That was pretty dark. You must leave immediately. See, he cares. He cares deeply. But he wants Ang to leave not because of that, what just happened. He wants Ang to leave because there's some danger to him. Oh, water healing? Is that what that was? The great benders of the water tribe sometimes have this ability. Oh. This elemental thing just gets deeper and deeper. Water brings healing and life, but fire brings only destruction. Eventually, we're torn apart. I cannot wait to see this guy fight. Awesome. Wow. Don't worry, man. My old teacher gave up fighting a long oh, time ago. Oh, his pupil is Joe. Okay. I'm never gonna firebend again. You'll have to eventually. That's not the no. lesson. You are no match. I think I can handle a child. He lost to Zuko. It's a trick! Whoa, wild shot! No self-control. Hmm. Is he gonna use it against him? Love his own ship. Are you crazy? You haven't thrown a single blow! No, but you have. Nice. Good job, Aang. That's a very nice, compact way for him to learn a lesson in that episode very quickly. But what about John John? John? Wait, where's John John? Yeah. <laughs> he disappeared. They good. all did. Well that means he's alive, right? So that's good. So it's so great. Because remember in another episode when she was jealous of him, right? It's because she was thinking about her own powers in terms of just waterbending. And Aang's a better waterbender than her in the way she was practicing it. At that time, I was talking about how you got to find your own way to approach it. You got to find your own entry point into the skill and what it means for you. And there you go. She's found her unique talent that she brings to it that is uniquely Katara. It's not competitive. It's not demeaning of others. It's just she's good at it, which is such a nice feeling. It's so nice when you find a way that you are useful and use the things that you've developed, use the skills you've developed in a way that's valuable. Her face says it all. I love that episode. I love the teacher thing, all the master thing. Aang learns a lesson, Katara learns a lesson. We get new powers and we get actually some character development for Zhao. Seems like he learned something, which is kind of 
unique. See what happens in their next encounter. I'll see you guys for the second to last video on season one.